congratulations. You've been inducted into the EA Sports Hall of Fame. Hello and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm James Brown. We're all set to begin an exciting season of IndyCar racing. Let's go trackside to Vancouver, British Columbia and EA Sports Racing Analyst Derek Daly for the start of the Indy season. Hello everybody, I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports, coming to you today from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada with the first round of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. As we look at the track layout, you can see this street course offers a daunting combination of high-speed straightaways and twisting hairpins that will challenge even the very best of drivers. Now, the best passing opportunities are on the long straights and the gentle curves leading into them. Hi, and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm your host, James Brown. This is the finale of this year's IndyCar season. Let's go to EA Sports Racing Analyst Derek Daly for an update on today's race from the Meibashi Circuit in Mesaka, Japan. Good afternoon, I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports, coming to you from Meibashi Circuit in Mesaka, Japan, and the 10th and final round of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. And let me tell you, there isn't a better track on the circuit to host this important race. Any car or driver that can survive this torture test has to be good. As we look at the layout, you can see there is no room for error here on this twisting narrow course and even less room to pass. The strategy to win at Maboshi can be summed up in just one word, survival. Good afternoon, I'm James Brown and welcome to the EA Sports Studio where we have a spectacular day of IndyCar racing scheduled. Let's go trackside for a live report from EA Sports racing analyst Derek Daly in Canyonlands, Utah and the Oasis Speedway. Get ready for round two of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. Hi, I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports, and today we're at the Oasis Raceway near rugged Canyonlands, Utah. Looking at the layout, we can see that this tough course starts off with a conventional straightaway, but quickly takes on the temperament of a desert rattlesnake as it twists and turns. Now, the key to victory here is to stay tight to the inside on the turns and then risk it all when a chance to pass comes along. Welcome to another exciting day of racing. I'm James Brown coming to you from the EA Sports Studio. We have another action-packed day of IndyCar racing for you. 
Let's go to EA Sports Racing analyst Derek Daly with an update from Kings Beach, just outside Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports, coming to you from Kings Beach near Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with round three of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. As we look at the track layout with its high-speed straightaways and brutal turns, it's obvious why this course has a well-deserved reputation as one of the toughest on the circuit. Anyone who wants to win here needs to have good cornering skills and the ability to take advantage of the 200 mile per hour passing opportunities. Hello and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm James Brown. We're all set for an exciting day of IndyCar racing. Let's go trackside with EA Sports racing analyst Derek Daly at the Grand Rapids Motorsports Complex in Detroit, Michigan. Hello, I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports and welcome to Michigan and the Grand Rapids Motorsports Complex for round four of the IndyCar Championship Series. As we can see from the layout, this combination course has something for every style of driver. On the backfield straightaway, there is an extended passing opportunity. The key to winning here is being able to balance aggressive driving tactics on the straightaway with skill and cautious strategy on the curves. Greetings and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm your host, James Brown. We are set and ready for some thundering IndyCar action. Let's go to Longhorn International Raceway near Carrizo Springs, Texas, and our race analyst, Derek Daly. A big howdy from Longhorn International Raceway near Carrizo Springs, Texas. I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports with round five of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. We're at the halfway mark of a great season and the championship is still anybody's game. As we check the track layout, the start-finish line is a long wide straightaway, then the going gets rough. The secret to bulldogging Longhorn is to avoid bump and run tactics on the curves and take advantage of the passing opportunities on the long wide straightaways. Hi, I'm James Brown welcoming you to another day of sensational IndyCar racing. Let's go trackside to Exhibition Place in Toronto, Canada, where our EA Sports analyst Derek Daly is covering the action. Hello and welcome to Exhibition Place, Toronto, Canada. I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports, bringing you round six of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. Looking at the track layout for this street course, we can see plenty of opportunities for the big cars to gear up to top speed on these straights. And the long, easy curves should offer some passing opportunities. Now experienced road racers I think might have a slight edge here because this race will be won or lost in the corners. Good afternoon and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm James Brown. We're all set for another exhilarating day of IndyCar racing. Let's go to EA Sports racing analyst Derek Daly in Rome, Georgia, home of the Phalanx Sports Car Course. All roads lead to Rome. Rome, Georgia that is. Home of the Phalanx Sports Car Course. Hello, I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports with round seven of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. Now with its columns, Failings looks more like a Roman Colosseum than a racetrack, but the Roman gladiators never had to face anything like this. Let's check the layout. Those mean looking curves just happen to be on the narrowest parts of the track. The best strategy out there is to pass when you can because there are not many opportunities. I'm James Brown and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. We have a sensational day of IndyCar racing planned for you. Let's head out to Oceanside International Raceway in Santa Cruz, California, where EA Sports racing analyst Derek Daly is set to call the action. Hello, I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports and welcome to round eight of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series at Oceanside International Raceway in Santa Cruz, California. As we can see by the layout, the track twists into a series of little curves that require good concentration and reflexes. And then the fun really starts. There are four tunnels, including one long curved monster where anything can happen. Drivers should use the course to their advantage and be prepared to block that inside racing line. Hello, I'm James Brown and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. We have another electrifying day of indie racing in the making. So let's get down to business. We're going to take you to Surfers Paradise in Queensland, Australia and EA Sports Racing Analyst Derek Daly for a live report. Good day, mates. I'm Derek Daly for EA Sports and welcome to the land down under and round nine of the IndyCar Championship Racing Series. We're at Surfers Paradise, home of Australia's foremost street track. 
As we can see by the layout, the course is fast, but any advantage gained on those long straights can easily be lost on the 16 turns that give this track its fearsome reputation. The best strategy here is stay away from those concrete walls and go all out on those long straights. It looks like there may be changes underway as reports come in that Gibson Linwood Racing's ace driver could be offered a chance to drive for a new team. It's said that Mitchell Sports, a stock car team, among others, is very interested. There's no confirmation on this story, but reliable sources say that thanks to a string of impressive finishes and overall excellent performance, Gibson Linwood's lead driver is being scouted by several teams, including the dynamic Satilo Gustafsson Racing. As the season wears on, several teams are already looking for new drivers, including Satilo Gustafsson Racing, which is said to be eyeing Pacific Car Competition's lead driver. In what could become one of the big stories of the year, after outstanding performances in some recent races, Pacific Car Competition's lead driver is eyeing offers from several top teams, including the highly regarded Team Andretti. There's more trading going on today than at a swap meet. Well, the latest rumour has McRae's Ctex ace driver being flooded with offers from several top teams, including Mitchell Sports stock car team. Keep your eye on McRae Ctex lead driver. Rumour has it this amazing young ace who has burned up the track in recent races is being wooed by other top teams, including the powerhouse team Andretti. At this point, several top teams are looking to add new talent for the final drive to the championship. Rumour has it Satilla Gustafsson's promising star is being courted by several top names, including Team Andretti. A major career move may be upcoming for Satilo Gustafsson's lead driver as rumours fly that the ace wheel jockey is being sought by several teams, including Gibson Linwood's stock car team. This is a story we will keep an eye on. After an impressive start in IndyCars, Team Andretti's top driver may be ready to try the stock car circuit. According to reliable sources, the young ace could receive several offers this week, including one from Nakalau Motorsports. There's a lot of racing news in the air today. According to one report, several teams are watching Templar Truer star driver and that Gibson Linwood Racing may make a firm offer. The latest word from the rumour mill is that Team Andretti's exciting lead driver could be switching teams and circuits, according to sources. Gibson Linwood Racing is looking for new blood and may make an offer later this week. A very well-placed source has just told us that Templar Truer's top driver, after a display of brilliant driving, may be stepping up in class very soon. Offers are reported to be coming in from three of the top teams, including Pacific Car Competition. Will Nakalau Motorsports star soon be driving under different colours? Well, reports have reached us that a serious offer may be made by several top teams, including Pacific Car Competition, which are actively seeking drivers with potential. Rumours keep circulating that McRae SeaTech Racing, which has been looking to add to his already impressive pool of talent, is one of several teams eyeing Nakalau Motorsports' hot lead driver. This is a story we'll be keeping a close watch on. We're only seconds away from another great day of racing. The sky is clear and a gentle breeze is blowing in from the south. As the drivers take a warm-up lap, let's look at the starting lineup. We have clear skies now, but a light rain last night caused fears of a slick track. However, the crews were out at dawn with dryers and the word is go. Here's the starting lineup. A blistering summer sun has heated things up, but you can bet it will get even hotter when the green flag drops. Before the action starts, let's take a look at the starting lineup. After fears of rain, it's turned into a fine day for racing with a dry, fast track. Just perfect for this field of evenly matched drivers. Now let's take a look at the starting lineup. It doesn't get much better than this. Clear blue skies and no wind. The weather is cooperating and now it's up to the drivers. Here's the starting lineup. Well, it's race time and some 50,000 fans are on hand to watch the very best drivers in the business go to work. With clear skies and a mild east wind, conditions are as good as they get. As the drivers warm up, let's take a look at the starting lineup. Well, that's the end of another exciting race with all the thrills we have come to expect from these top drivers. Team Andretti proved they had the right stuff with a hard-fought victory. 
Now let's take a final look at the week's results and the championship point standings. Brilliant strategy combined with bold driving gave Nakalau Motorsports a victory to be proud of as they advanced one more rung up that championship ladder. It was a great win, but the season is far from over. Now let's take a look at this week's race results and the point standings. There were some fierce battles out there today, but Pacific Car Competition held on and earned a convincing first place victory. Now Pacific is certainly a force to be reckoned with this season. How much of a force? Well, Let's have a review of this week's race results and the current point standings. Talk about excitement. That race had it all and True Colors Racing took a well-deserved victory lap after that grueling test of car and driver. Before we sign off, let's see this week's race results and how the championship fight is shaping up. Racing doesn't get much better than that. Templar Truer Racing Group managed to hold off some strong challenges and claimed an outstanding victory. This will definitely have an effect on the championship battle. Now before we go, let's take a look at the week's race results and the current point standings. Well, they'll be talking about this one for years to come. Gibson Linwood Racing outdrove and outmaneuvered the best drivers on the circuit and passed one more milestone on the road to the championship. Now let's review this week's results and point standings. This was the best of the best going head to head today in an exciting no holes barred race to the finish. McRae SeaTech Racing showed they may have what it takes to go all the way to the top after this exciting victory. This is a big, big win as we can now see from this week's championship point standings. Now that was a well-deserved victory. Satilla Gustafsson gave a driving lesson to the top drivers in the country and they conquered one of the toughest tracks on the circuit. This win also moves them one step closer to the championship. How close? Well, have a look at this week's race results. Chalk up another one for the record books. Team Andretti finishing the money again with an impressive effort, but is it enough to make them championship contenders? Let's take a look at this week's race results and the current point standings. Today's race was a textbook example of how it should be done and Nakalau Motorsports helped write a new chapter with a powerful challenge that had the leader looking in his rearview mirror all the way. Now let's examine the week's results and the point standings. The action started when the green flag dropped and never let up as Pacific Car Competition stay the course against a field of top drivers on a very difficult track. This impressive finish moves Pacific one more rung up that championship ladder. Now let's check this week's race results and current standings. Well, another thrilling race is over and True Colors Racing proved they could run with the big boys thanks to a good run at the leader and a strong finish. We can see how this effort has paid off as we look at the championship point standings. That was a great race in what's shaping up to be a great season. Templar True Racing Group made a forceful challenge for the lead and showed they could be a force to be reckoned with in the future races. Let's see how this affects the championship standings as we look at the week's race results. Well, another day of great racing action is over. Gibson Linwood Racing made an outstanding effort on that final lap to finish in the money but couldn't quite find the winning formula for that drive down victory lane. Now as for the championship battle, let's take a look at this week's race results and the point standings. A great day and a great race. McRae SeaTech Racing showed real improvement with a superb demonstration of driving skill. Now we're almost out of time, but before we go, let's check out this week's results and the championship point standings. Another race and one more step on the long road to the championship. Satil Augustuson Racing got a big leg up in points with a solid performance and a strong in the money finish. To see just how the championship fight is going, let's review this week's results. Well, another great racing season has ended. We'd like to congratulate Team Andretti and their driver on winning the IndyCar Championship and thank them for providing us with some exciting memories and thrilling races. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly and we'll see you again next season. Well, it's all over. As this season ends, we'd like to congratulate Nakalau Motorsports and their driver for winning the IndyCar Championship. Nakalau beat some of the toughest competitors I've ever seen. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly, and I'll see you next spring. Another great season of IndyCar racing comes to a close. 
Pacific Car Competition and their lead driver did live up to early expectations and managed to triumph over the competition and win the IndyCar Championship. Congratulations to everyone over at Pacific. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly. I'll see you next spring. That wraps up another season of Championship Racing. Congratulations to True Colors Racing and their ace driver for a well-deserved win of this year's IndyCar Championship. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly, and join us next spring when we return with more IndyCar excitement. It was an exciting season as underdog Templar Truer Racing and their top driver managed to beat the best of the best and win this year's IndyCar Championship. Congratulations to Templar Truer for a job well done. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly, and I'll be seeing you again in the spring when IndyCar Racing returns. With a thrilling IndyCar season now concluded, we'd like to say well done to McRae SeaTech and their lead driver for a hard-fought and well-deserved IndyCar Championship. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly, and we'll be back in the spring when the big cars roll again. The checkered flag is down and the season is over. Congratulations to Gibson Linwood Racing and their lead driver on their IndyCar Championship victory after a long and grueling scramble to the top. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly, and we'll be back next year with more exciting action. Well, the season's over and it's time to say goodbye. But before we go, congratulations to Satillo Gustafsson Racing and their star driver on a well-deserved IndyCar Championship victory. For EA Sports, I'm Derek Daly. So long. Hello and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm James Brown. This is the start of an exciting season of stock car racing. Let's go trackside to the Australia Thunderdome and EA Sports racing analyst, Bob Jenkins. Hello, I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports, coming to you from the Australia Thunderdome with the first round of the Stock Car Championship Series. An estimated 50,000 fans are on hand to watch the best drivers on the circuit challenge this tri-oval super speedway. Looking at the track layout, notice the 24-degree bank corners off the back and front straights. That's where the action will be as drivers challenge for position coming out of the corner, going onto the high-speed straights. Hi, I'm James Brown welcoming you to another day of sensational racing action. This is the final event of this year's Stock Car Series. Let's go trackside to the Grand Rapids Motorsports Complex in Detroit, Michigan, where our EA Sports Racing Analyst Bob Jenkins is covering the action. Well, it's been a long road, but here we are, the 10th and final round of the Stock Car Championship Series. Hello, I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports, and welcome to the pride of Michigan racing, the Grand Rapids Motorsports Complex. Looking at the layout, we see this combination course has something for every driver. On the back straightaway, there is an extended passing opportunity, but the key to winning here is being able to balance aggressive driving tactics on the straightaway with the ability to face challenges and hold the line on the vicious curves. I'm James Brown and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. We have a great day of stock car racing planned for you, so let's go now to the Vallejo Speedway in Southern California where EA Sports Racing Analyst Bob Jenkins is covering the action. Hello and welcome to Round 2 of the Stock Car Championship Racing Series. I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports coming to you today from California and the Vallejo Speedway. As we can see by the layout, this is a merciless course with as many twists and turns as a California freeway. There are good passing opportunities on the backstretch, but drivers will have to gear down fast when they hit that sharp hairpin. Ability to corner will count over speed in the long run. Good evening and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm James Brown. We're all set for an exhilarating night of stock car racing. Let's go to EA Sports Racing Analyst Bob Jenkins in Binghamton, New York for the race. Good evening and welcome to Binghamton Speedway in Binghamton, New York. I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports with Round 3 of the Stock Car Championship Racing Series. Let's look at the layout for this night race. Oval track drivers should feel right at home thanks to the long curves and straightaways. Those who can rely on their instincts and who can get a feel for the track's quick turns will have a definite edge. I'm James Brown and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. We have a sensational stock car race planned for you today. Let's head out to Switchback Hills, Colorado, home of Bridgeport Raceway, where EA Sports Racing Analyst Bob Jenkins is set to call the action. Welcome to Switchback Hills, Colorado, home of Bridgeport Raceway and round four of the Stock Car Championship Racing Series. I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports. 
The air is thin up here at 5,000 feet, and despite that, Bridgeport is a fast course. As we look at the layout, notice the best passing opportunities are on the tight turns as drivers gear down. Anyone who wants to win here can't be afraid to go flat out on the straightaways and challenge for position on those wicked turns. Hello, I'm James Brown and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. We have another electrifying day of stock car racing in the making. So let's get down to business and go to Glacier Fields in Reno, Nevada, where EA Sports Racing Analyst Bob Jenkins has a live report. Greetings, I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports and welcome to Glacier Fields in Reno, Nevada and the fifth round of the Stock Car Championship Series. This is the halfway point in the championship drive, so expect to see some great racing as drivers try to better their point standings. As we look at the track layout, the start-finish line is on a long, wide section that offers a good chance to pass. Drivers should be prepared to roll the dice on the wide-open straightaways where there is room to break out of the pack. Good afternoon, I'm James Brown and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. We have a spectacular day of stock car racing scheduled. Let's go trackside for a live report from EA Sports Racing Analyst Bob Jenkins at Concord Pacific Place in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. Hello, I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports, way up north in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, host for the sixth round of the Stock Car Championship Racing Series. As we look at the track layout, we can see this street course offers a challenging combination of high-speed straightaways and sharp hairpins. The best passing opportunities are on the long straights and the gentle curves leading into them. Welcome to another day of exciting racing action. I'm James Brown coming to you from the EA Sports Studio. Let's go straight to the track where EA Sports racing analyst Bob Jenkins will call the action from Kings Beach just outside of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Good afternoon, I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports, reporting from Kings Beach, just outside of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with Round 7 of the Stock Car Championship Racing Series. Let's see what the drivers have to face on this daunting track. Drivers will need to balance good cornering skills with the ability to take advantage of the 180 mile per hour straights. Hello and welcome to the EA Sports Studio, I'm James Brown. We're all set for an exciting day of stock car racing. Let's go trackside with EA Sports Racing Analyst Bob Jenkins on the streets of Cincinnati where there is plenty of excitement surrounding the upcoming race. Good afternoon, I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports and the action is coming to you from the streets of Cincinnati where the top drivers in the country will be going head to head in round eight of the Stock Car Championship Series. Looking at the course layout, we see there are two straightaways that offer some passing opportunities, but drivers will have to gear down fast and ride the brakes when they hit the fiendish curves this course is famous for. Greetings and welcome to the EA Sports Studio. I'm your host, James Brown. We're set and ready for some thrilling stock car action. Let's go to Exhibition Place in Toronto, Canada and our race analyst, Bob Jenkins. Greetings and welcome to Exhibition Place, Toronto, Canada. I'm Bob Jenkins for EA Sports, bringing you Round 9 of the Stock Car Championship Racing Series. As we can see from the track layout, there are plenty of opportunities to reach top speeds on the straights, and the long, easy curve should offer passing opportunities. But be warned, there are some nasty surprises here. Road course drivers might have a slight edge, but watch the corners, for that's where the race will be won or lost. After tearing up the track in the past weeks, Geller Motorsports lead driver may be moving on to greener pastures, as offers are said to be pouring in from major players, including Nakalau Motorsports. We've seen some thrilling racing this season, and a lot of those thrills have been supplied by Mitchell Sports top driver. Word from Pit Road is that the hot wheel jockey is looking at several offers, including one from Nakalau Motorsports. This is a story and a driver to keep an eye on. After consistent in-the-money finishes and some brilliant displays of high-performance driving, Mitchell Sports head driver may soon receive a firm offer to join Gibson Linwood in their drive to the championship. Scouts from the Indy circuit are said to have their eye on Iger Competition's ace driver and offers may be forthcoming. Pacific Car Competition is a leading bidder as they seek to shore up their place in the standings. The best are getting better as Nakalau's brilliant lead driver who has been outstanding these past few weeks is reported to be weighing offers from several elite teams, including powerhouse Gibson Linwood. Word has just reached us that Nakalau's track-burning lead driver may be switching sides and will join the stable of stars over at Gibson Linwood Racing. Could IndyCars be next? 
We'll just have to wait and see. A brilliant season of high-performance driving may be paying off in a big way for Nakalau's top driver as rumors fly that the Andretti Indy team is considering making offers to the young ace. This could be a big step in what is already an amazing career. After proving a master on the stock car circuit, Gibson Linwood's lead driver may be ready to take on the 200-mile-per-hour challenge of Indy cars. Rumor has it that McRae SeaTex IndyCar team is very interested in making a deal. Thanks to some dazzling push-the-envelope driving, Gibson Linwood's ace wheel jockey may be offered a chance to pit those skills against the best of the world. Word from Pit Road is the Andretti Indy team is ready to see if this driver has the right stuff and may make an offer very, very soon. A driver to keep your eye on this season is Pacific Car Competition's top wheel jockey who's been very, very impressive in recent races. Word from Pit Road is that several teams are looking at the young ace, including Geller Motorsports. There could be some big changes on the track soon, according to insiders, as Pacific Car Competition's hot lead driver considers a new bundle of offers. Word is the Mitchell Sports team is very interested. Teams are playing a game of musical chairs this week as rumors continue to fly. McRae SeaTech's lead driver may join another stable of drivers, possibly Mitchell Sports team. We'll keep on top of the story as it breaks. After a string of consistent finishes and some very impressive driving, McRae SeaTech's top wheel jockey is said to be one of the leading candidates for an offer from Iger Competition, which is looking to improve its chances in the championship battle. According to inside sources, the IndyCar circuit may be the new home of Geller Motorsports' top driver if a reported offer from Pacific Car Competition's IndyCar team is true. This is definitely a story we'll be following this season. We're only seconds away from another great day of racing. The sky is clear and a gentle breeze is blowing in from the south. As the drivers take a warm-up lap, let's look at the starting lineup. We have clear skies now, but a light rain last night caused fears of a slick track. However, the crews were out at dawn with dryers, and the word is go. Here's the starting lineup. A blistering summer sun has heated things up, but you can bet it will get even hotter when the green flag drops. Before the action starts, let's take a look at the starting lineup. After fears of rain, it's turned into a fine day for racing with a dry, fast track, just perfect for this field of evenly matched drivers. Now let's take a look at the starting lineup. It doesn't get much better than this. Clear blue skies and no wind. The weather is cooperating, so now it's up to the drivers. Well, it's race time, and some 50,000 fans are on hand to watch the best drivers in the business go to work. With clear skies and a mild east wind, conditions are as good as they get. As the drivers warm up, let's look at the starting lineup. There was pain and punishment on that racetrack today, but Iger competition stayed the course to rack up a convincing and impressive first place finish. Our time is almost up, but before we say goodbye, let's check this week's results and the championship standings. Brilliant strategy combined with bold driving gave Nakalau Motorsports a victory to be proud of as they advanced one more rung up the championship ladder. It was a great win, but the season is far from over. Now let's take a look at this week's race results and the point standings. Well, that's one more race and one big step toward the championship. Congratulations to Powers Racing for a hard-fought and well-deserved ride to victory. As for the other competitors, well, let's check out the current championship point standings. There was some fierce battles out there today, but Pacific Car Competition held on and earned a convincing first place victory. Pacific is currently a force to be reckoned with this season. How much of a force? Well, let's review this week's race results and current point standings. That race was a real heart stopper. Mitchell sports team proved they had what it takes as they scraped and clawed their way to the checkered flag, outmaneuvering and outdriving some of the best in the business. Now here's this week's race results and the championship point standings. Well, it's all over but the celebrations as Geller Motorsports takes a victory lap after chalking up a big win against a tough field of competitors. Now let's look at the week's race results and see how the championship battle is shaping up. They'll be talking about this one for years to come. Gibson Linwood Racing outdrove and outmaneuvered the best drivers on the circuit and passed one more milestone on the road to the championship. Now let's review this week's results and point standings. This was the best of the best going head-to-head -to -head today in an exciting no-holds-barred race to the finish. 
McRae SeaTech Racing showed they may have what it takes to go all the way to the top after this exciting victory. This is a big, big win, as we see by this week's championship point standings. Congratulations to the winner and to Iger Competition for a great effort that gives them a big boost in the point standings. Let's look at the week's race results to see how this affects the championship battle. Today's race was a textbook example of how it should be done. And Nakalau Motorsports helped write a new chapter with a powerful challenge that had the leader looking in the rearview mirror all the way. Now let's examine the week's results and the point standings. It was non-stop action today and Powers Racing showed real talent with that impressive finish. This splendid showing certainly makes Powers a contender in the championship battle. Let's see where they now stand as we review this week's race results. The action started when the green flag dropped and never let up as Pacific Car Competition stayed the course against a field of top drivers on a difficult track. This impressive finish moves Pacific one more rung up the championship ladder. Now let's check this week's race results and current standings. Now that was a race. Mitchell sports team pulled out all the stops with an impressive finish that showed they may be the team to beat in the drive to the championship. We can see just how that championship battle is shaping up as we look at this week's race results and point standings. That's a race they'll be talking about for a long time to come. Geller Motorsports went all out and really challenged for first place but couldn't quite overtake the leader. Let's see how this good effort paid off as we examine the championship point standings. Well, another day of great racing action is over. Gibson Linwood Racing made an outstanding effort on the final laps to finish in the money, but couldn't quite find the winning formula for that drive down victory lane. Now as for the championship battle, let's take a look at this week's race results and the point standings. A great day and a great race. McRae SeaTech Racing showed real improvement with a superb demonstration of driving skill. We're almost out of time, but before we go, let's check out the week's results and the championship point standings. That caps another exciting racing season, and what a season it was. Iger competition wouldn't say die as they held on and captured the stock car championship. Congratulations to Iger and their lead driver for a job well done. I'm Bob Jenkins, and I'll be seeing you next year. Well, that's the end of another season of championship racing. Congratulations to Nakalau Motorsports and their driver for winning the Stock Car Championship. Nakalau beat out one of the toughest fields of competitors I've ever seen on the circuit. For EA Sports, I'm Bob Jenkins and I'll see you next spring. That brings to a close another exciting season of big car action. Congratulations to the star driver and everyone at Powers Racing on winning this year's Stock Car Championship. For EA Sports, I'm Bob Jenkins, and I'll be right here next spring with more racing excitement. Another great season of stock car racing comes to a close. Pacific Car Competition and their lead driver lived up to early expectations and managed to triumph over the competition and win the stock car championship. Congratulations to everyone over at Pacific. For EA Sports, I'm Bob Jenkins. See you next spring. Well, the final flag has dropped and the season is over. Congratulations to Mitchell Sports Team and their driver for winning the Stock Car Championship with a combination of hard work and great driving. For EA Sports, I'm Bob Jenkins. Be sure to be with us next year for more Red Hot Stock Car action. This brings to a close another exciting season and congratulations to powerhouse Geller Motorsports and their star driver on winning this year's Stock Car Championship. For EA Sports, I'm Bob Jenkins. Join us next spring when we return with more start to finish stock car thrills. With a thrilling season of stock car action concluded, we'd like to say well done Gibson Linwood Racing and their leading driver for a hard fought and well deserved stock car championship. For EA Sports, I'm Bob Jenkins and we'll be back in the spring when the big cars roll again. The checkered flag is down and the season is over. Congratulations to McRae SeaTech Racing and their lead driver on their stock car championship victory after a long and grueling scramble to the top. For EA Sports, I'm Bob Jenkins and we'll be back next year with more hot cars and hot action. One of the first things you learn in driver school is the term apex. What is it? It's, the, it's where you should be meeting to, in the corner, it's, it's where you sh your car should be to uh, be proper to the next corner. It's, it's basically, if you're hitting your apex, it means it's the optimum, you're in the optimum part of the corner 
where you should be, you know, for optimum uh, speed coming off, going in, coming off. And can you combine corners if you're in uh, an, an S situation, a series of S's, can you combine those corners to get through them quickly? Sometimes it depends on the, how deep the corner is or how the corner is laid out. Yes, sometimes you can kind of straight shot a corner, especially like in a chicane situation. It depends on how tight the chicane is. You can sometimes almost straight shot it. If, you're, if you do it right, you can, you can get an advantage that way. Is there a big difference between the setup of, a, let's say, an oval and a road course? No question. You know, they're, they're very different. Uh, obviously, on an oval, you only have to set up for a left-hand corner, so uh, you're able to optimize the total setup just for turning left, whereas on a road course, you're more compromising left to right hand, and, and you can't get the full potential just for a right hand or a left hand, and you have to compromise. So, yeah, it's a, it's a different type of setup. Was your dad a hard competitor to race against on the track? Yeah, he was, uh, especially the pass. I think for me, he, there's never been anybody tougher to pass on a racetrack than dad. So did you ever get into any arguments when you go home about something that maybe he should have done or should have made things easier well, for you, or do you even expect that? We, we've, we had a few contacts, you know, along the way, which was expected, and, uh, you know, I blamed him for some things, he blamed me for some things, and it's just the way it always worked out, you know, it, it was okay. It's called different things, uh, the stock car drivers might refer to it as a draft, and the IndyCar guys call it a tow, but what is it, and how can it be used in uh, racing? Well, a draft is used uh, for, basically, you use it to, to um to pass with, you could come, especially on uh, the oval tracks, we use it a lot more than, than you, you do on road course because the straightaways aren't as long on road courses, so you can't get the effect as much. But on uh, the oval tracks, uh, you use it, you can use it to your advantage to, uh, to really come up, suck up on somebody and pass them. What it does is it, it creates a suction effect that when you come off a corner behind somebody, you're actually pick up, it makes you pick up speed because you're, he's pulling you along. He's actually towing you down the straightaway. And what he's, you're actually traveling faster than him because, because of the, the towing effect that, he, that the car gives you in front of you. And so you can actually feel that in the race car? Yes, you can. You can actually, when you come off a corner, you're following somebody, you, you can actually feel yourself. You can feel the RPMs pull up in the car. You can actually, the car, you can actually feel it. Do you realize, Mario, how big a hero you are to so many motorsports fans? Well, I don't know. It's tough for me to put it in those terms. I, um, I do have uh, a lot of affection for the fans because I receive letters every day. And uh, throughout my career, you know, obviously you, you experience the highs and lows and you're pretty much <clears throat> down, you know, <clears throat> in the valleys more than you're in the peaks. And people, but the, the true fans, they never wavered. They're always there to support you. You have no idea how much that means to you. And, but it, it's a lasting thing, you know. They, they, uh, they usually, people say, well, pe you know, people that in general are fickle. Not really. Not really. You, uh, you, you have, um, you learn to think differently. Yeah. And, um, and I've, I've had that experience. Take us back a little bit and give me some of the memorable moments of Mario Andretti's career. Well, I think uh, there were phases in my career that uh, provided memorable moments, such as uh, just really uh, accomplishing uh, just championships, winning certain events, uh, like uh, I always had uh, such um, uh, the dreams about Formula One, my Formula One days, and uh, winning my first Formula One race uh, in a Ferrari, for instance, uh, and then going on and winning a world championship, uh, winning Indianapolis, uh, winning races like Daytona 500, uh, 12 hours of Sebring, events like that, uh, being involved with the Ford program, the Mount Ford program, uh, driving with uh, uh, all the drivers that were my heroes, you know, the Dan Gurneys, people like that. So, like I said, I've been blessed with a lot of great moments. One in particular, when you went back to Monza and drove the Ferrari Turbo and put it on the pole. I mean, that had to be a very special occasion to do that in Monza. Well, here again, uh, exactly, Monza being uh, uh, a venue, being a track where I saw my first Grand Prix in 1954, uh, age 14, and then uh, winning 
a Formula One race there. And then later on, actually my last Formula One experience, uh, substituting for an injured driver there and uh, putting the car on pole, a Ferrari on pole in Monza, you know. <laughs> Again, uh, with the type of reaction uh, that you usually get from the Italian fans, they're just, they're just phenomenal. I mean, that's as good as it gets. Passing, of course, is the uh, probably one of the most important things in racing, unless you lead from green to checkered. But uh, is there uh, a strategy on passing? Are there points that you look for that you can pass a slower person ahead of you? Well, it's something that uh, what you do f when you pass and stuff, you, you, you check that out during practice and stuff. You start feeling it out. You see where the best passing opportunities are on certain tracks. And uh, some tracks, you, you, you suss that out. And the best area is the passer, definitely in the, in the braking zones. You uh, can really dive bomb underneath people. You, what you do is you late break the person to the corner. You go in a few feet more than the other person, and then you just hold them out a little bit for in the corner and then you can overtake him but uh, that's usually the best places to overtake of course you can overtake somebody coming onto a straightaway as well if you can if you're carrying more speed off the corner you can usually set him up and pass him as you come off the corner but usually the best places are going into the corner do racing drivers have to be physically very fit to be uh, on top of their game all the time i believe so more so the last three, four, five years than, than ever before because of the, the stress that uh, is put, being put on your body nowadays because we're going so fast around some of these racetracks now that uh, physically it just uh, it puts such strain. You know, the G-forces, some places we're putting four and a half Gs on the body and, and uh, you know, the braking forces and the acceleration, we have so much horsepower nowadays, it's just... Uh, it's amazing the stress that's put on uh, your whole body, your legs, your arms, your neck, and uh, yes, you need to be in shape. Why the decision to race so many different types of cars? I mean, whether it's a sports car, Indy car, Formula One, stock car, why race so many different varieties? I don't think I raced enough. I think uh, if I would have had the chance, I would have <laughs> raced in some motorcycles. <laughs> I. I just really love, I truly, truly enjoy my motor racing in general right throughout my career. And to have the opportunity to drive in different disciplines, you know, was really something that I was not going to miss out.